In this problem, we have a very special setup. So we have an infinite square well that has a width of 2a. So you have something like this for the potential. And then we're given that the initial wave function is going to be equal to the stationary state for the infinite square well with a width of a. So in that case, the initial wave function would be given by this formula. So sine pi x divided by a. So this would be the xi1 of x for the infinite square well with a width of a. But now we are in a infinite square well with a width of 2a. And so what we want to find in this problem is uh, are the en different probabilities of obtaining the different energy levels. So what that means is that if you consider the expression for the general form of the wave function, you would get something like this. So we have some constants cn multiplied by xi n of x times e to the power of negative i e m t divided by h bar. So this cn here is going to give us the different probabilities of obtaining the different energy levels. So this is what we're going to want to find in this problem. We're going to want to find the different values of cn to see what probability it will be for us to get the different energy levels. So for this setup over here, so for this infinite square well with a width of 2a, the energy levels en would be given by this formula, n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by 2m times 2a squared. So it's 2a because the width is 2a. And then the xi n of x, the xi n of x is going to be equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2a, once again because the width is equal to 2a, times sine n pi x divided by 2a. So of course these twos, they cancel out, so I can just rewrite this as 1 over the square root of 2, uh, one, root, 1 over the square root of a. So this is going to be our xi n of x. So given this, we, are, we, are, we will be able to use the initial wave function to find what cn should be. And then once we find cn, we will be able to find what the uh, probabilities are for obtaining the different energy levels. So just recall that cn squared is equal to the probability that your energy level is equal to the nth energy level. So that is why we're interested in finding cn. So we find cn by considering the initial wave function. So when t is equal to 0, you can take a look at this term over here. When t is equal to 0, all these e terms will be equal to 1. So we're going to have something like this. So cn times xi n x. And this is going to be equal to the initial wave function that is given to us. So square root of 2 over a sine pi x over a. So recall that this term is only valid for x being equal to 0 and a. So you can imagine the initial wave function looking something like this. So this is only valid for this region over here from 0 to a. Everywhere else it's just going to be equal to 0. So in order, uh, so now we're, we know that this, is, this relationship is true, so we're going to use Fourier's trick to find what the constants cn should be. So if we find cn, we're going to integrate both sides. We're going to multiply both sides by uh, xi n of x, and then we're going to integrate both sides. So uh, in our case, our initial wave function is going to be equal to this term. And then recall that uh, outside of 0 and a everywhere else, it's going to be equal to 0. So for the bounds, they I can just rewrite this as being equal to 0 to a. So everywhere else, uh, from negative infinity to 0, uh, this term is just equal to 0. For a to positive infinity, this term is also equal to 0. So I can just change the bounds to 0 to a. And then within 0 to a, our initial wave function is going to be equal to this term. So I can just substitute it in. So square root of 2 over a sine pi x over a. And then for this term, I'm just going to substitute in xi n of x, which is over here. So I can just substitute that straight in. 1 over the square root of a sine n pi, n pi x over 2a. So now we can begin to evaluate this expression. So let us just pull the constants to the outside first. So we have a square root of 2 divided by a. So we have 2 square root of, a of a's. And then we have a sine pi x over a, and we have a sine n pi x over 2a. So in order to evaluate this, what we're going to do is that we're going to use the product to sum formula. So that means we're going to use this formula. Sine a times sine b is going to be equal to 1 half cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b. So if you don't remember this formula, you can just look this up yourself. So now we're going to use this formula to simplify this integral. 
So now I'm going to drop these constants and I'm going to focus on this integral over here. So the integral is going to be equal to, so first we have a 1 half on the outside, and then we have cosine a minus b, so cosine this term minus this term. So we have cosine pi x over a minus n pi x over 2a. And then we have cosine minus cosine a plus b. So both of these terms added together. So pi x over a plus n pi x over 2a. And then dx. And then of course I can just uh, simplify this uh, slightly by grouping up like terms. I can just pull out this pi over a. And then I will have a 1 minus n over 2 times x. I could do the same for this term. I'm going to pull out a pi over a. And then we have a 1 plus n over 2x. So this slight rearrangement makes this uh, term in, inside the bracket looks, uh, look nicer. And in such a case, you see that we actually obtain two cosine terms, which should be relatively easy to integrate. So I'm just going to change this to n over 2 minus 1 instead, because I like to have the n with the positive coefficient. So inside the cosine term, it doesn't matter what sign you have, so I can always freely add a positive or minus sign in the front, and it won't affect the value. And so this is the first term, and for the second term we have cosine pi over a n over 2 plus 1 x dx. So both of these terms should be relatively easy uh, to integrate. So integrating this we have sine pi over a n over 2 minus 1 x, and then we divide this by the constants pi over a n over 2 minus 1. And this is evaluated from 0 to a. And then now we can integrate this as well. We do the same thing. So pi over a n over 2 plus 1 x divided by pi over a n over 2 plus 1. And this is evaluated from 0 to a. So now we can proceed with evaluating this expression. So when we substitute in 0, first of all, notice that when we substitute in 0, we get sine 0, and then we also get sine 0 over here. So both of these terms will be equal to 0, so we can pretty much just ignore the terms where we substitute in 0. And then when we substitute in a, uh, uh, it will be slightly more interesting, so we will substitute in a. And first of all, let's just pull some of these constants out. We have this pi over a, so I can just pull that out. So it becomes a over pi over here. And then for this term, I'm just going to flip it, so it becomes... 2 divided by n minus 2, and then we're going to have the sine term, and then we're going to substitute in a, so we see that it cancels out with the term in the denominator, so we have n over 2 minus 1 times pi. And then we're going to do the same over here, so we've pulled these constants out, we're going to flip this term, it becomes 2 divided by n plus 2, and so 2 divided by n plus 2, and then I'm going to substitute in a, once again it cancels out with the denominator, so we get sine n over 2 plus 1 times pi. And so there we have it. So now all we have to do is just to simplify this a bit further. So these 2's, they cancel out. So a over pi. And then I can actually pull these two sine terms out because actually both of these are actually equal. You can see that if, uh, notice this term inside the bracket, if I add 2 pi to it, it's going to turn into this term. And then sine functions are periodic. It repeats itself after every Interval uh, after every interval of 2 pi. So if I add 2 pi, it's not going to change the value of this term over here. And if I add 2 pi, it's going to equal, be equal to this term. So that means both of these terms are actually equal. So I can actually just pull sine n over 2 plus 1 pi, or you can pull minus 1, doesn't matter. Both of them have the same value. So I can just pull this term out. And inside the bracket, what remains will be 1 over n minus 2 minus 1 over n plus 2. But then adding this is e easy enough. We just uh, we can just easily add this up. We have n minus 2, n plus 2, and then we have n plus 2 minus n minus 2. And of course, the uh, numerator, you get, you see the n's, they cancel out, and then the 2's combine together to give you a 4. And then for the denominator, I can write this out as n squared minus 4. So that is how you can simplify this term. And so there we have it. This is how we can, uh, how we can evaluate this integral. So that brings us back to our original question, what exactly is cn? So cn is equal to square root of 2 divided by a multiplied by this integral, which we have found is equal to this term. So I can just dump this term straight into here. So n squared 
n squared minus 4, and then we have sine n over 2 plus 1 pi. And of course, these cancel out, and then I can just combine some of the terms together. So I have 4 square root of 2, and then I'll put the pi in the denominator. So this is what the cn is going to be equal to. And you can notice that for different values of n, first, first of all, notice that when when n is equal to 2, this formula doesn't really quite work because in the denominator you're going to get a 0. So this is actually undefined. So we're going to have to use a, a, a slightly different integral to find what c2 should be. So we're going to uh, withhold that for the time being. So right now we don't know what n, uh, what cn is for n is equal to 2. But we can still use this formula to find all the other values. So for all the other even numbers, like 4, 6, 8, and so on, you can see that if you substitute this in, you get Let's say if you substitute in 4, you get 4 over 2, which is 2, you get sine 3 pi, which is equal to 0. And you can do the same for all the other even numbers. You can see that you get sine of some integer times pi, which is always equal to 0. So that means cn for all n equal to 4, 6, 8, and so on. So for all even numbers except for 2, you're going to get 0. And then when n is equal to an odd number, so 1, 3, 5, and so on, you can see that if you put in at 1 over here, you get sine 3 over 2 pi, which in that case is equal to negative 1. You substitute in 3, you get 3 over 2 plus 1, so 5 over 2 pi. In that case, that's equal to 1. So you can see that it's going to be equal to a negative 1, 1, negative 1, and then it's going to keep repeating itself for cases when n is equal to an odd number. So it doesn't really matter if I have a negative or positive sign, because in the end, when we're looking for the probabilities, we're going to be squaring the term anyway. So I'm just going to represent this kind of behavior with a plus and minus sign. And then uh, this plus and minus sign is going to be applied to this term. So 4 times the square root of 2 divided by pi n squared minus 4. So this is what cn is. Uh, so we have found cn is for these cases, but we still don't know what it, cn should be for n is equal to 2. So that's what we're going to try to find next. So c2, if we want to find c2, we're going to have to go back to this original formula. So we know that cn is equal to this term. And then we jumped to that giant integral because we applied this formula. But you can see that when n is equal to 2, we actually don't need to use this. You need to use the product of sum formula. You can see that when n is equal to 2, so let me just write this out. c2 is equal to integral of 0 to a. And then we have square root of 2 over a times sine pi x over a. And then for this other term, we have 1 over the square root of a. And then when n is equal to 2, this is just equal to 2 pi x over 2a. So the two twos, they both cancel out. So that is also going to give us pi x over a dx. So that means we're going to get a square root of a, a square root of 2 divided by a. And then we're going to integrate sine square of pi x over a. So integrating this should be easy enough. We're going to use the double angle formula. So we're going to use this formula over here. So that means I can change this integral to 1 minus cosine 2 pi x over a divided by 2 dx. And then I'm not going to work out the details. Uh, just uh, You can try integrating this. You're going to get a sine, and you substitute in 0 and a. Both of them, uh, you're going to get 0. So in the end, this whole term is just going to be equal to 0. So in the end, you're, you're going to get a over 2, which comes from this term when you integrate 1 from 0 to a. Uh, yeah, from 0 to a. So this is what you're going to get for c2. And you can see that the a's, they cancel out. So in the end, you're going to get square root of 2 over 2. Or I can write this out as 1 over the square root of 2. So now you can see that we have pretty much completed the puzzle. So we have found all the values of cn. So when n is equal to 2, cn is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. So now it brings us back to the important question. What we wanted to find was the probability of obtaining the different energy levels. And we know that this is equal to the absolute value square of cn. And so now we can see that the absolute value square of cn is equal to, first of all, it's equal to 1 half for n is equal to 2. It's going to be equal to 0 for all subsequent even numbers. So for 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, it's going to be equal to 0. And then for the odd numbers, when n is equal to 1, 3, 5, and so on, we're just going to square this. So you can see that, like I said before, the positive or minus sign doesn't really matter because in the end, you're just going to square this. So squaring this, you get 16 times 2, which is 32. And then divided by pi square, n square, 
minus 4 squared. And so this is a formula that you can, you can use for finding the different probabilities of finding the different energy levels. And in part A of this question, uh, what we were told to find is the, is the most probable energy level that you're going to get. And obviously you can see that uh, you can substitute in the different numbers, uh, 1, 3, 5, into this formula. You can see that the largest probability is going to be this one. So the largest probability is going to be C2 squared, which is equal to 1 half. So what that means is that if you have a setup that looks something like this, if you have an infinite square well with a width of 2a, and then your particle starts up with a wave function equal to this term, and then when you measure the energy level of the system, the most likely energy level that you're going to get is going to be E2, the E2 given by this formula. And you can see that since our En is given by this formula, n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by 2m 2a squared, our E2 is just going to be equal to substituting four, uh, 2 over here, so we get 4 pi squared h bar squared divided by 2m, and this is going to be 4 a squared, so we can see this. these conveniently cancel out. And so you can see that this is going to be the energy level that you're most likely going to get.